you're the dreamer of your dream, but you're not the dreamer of my dream. Not in the way we like to think about it. As a collective, we all all together dreaming the, the the major dream of planet Earth. But in each of our individual worlds, while we seem to have individual worlds, we are the dreamer of our own dream. Which means each and every one that shows up, we ask to be there. Everything they do and act out, we gave them the script. We're directing the movie. We wrote it. We're directing it. And it's happening, unfolding as we chose and choose. That's the idea. The only idea here is that we dream a happy dream, the choice in every moment. And it's hardest to make when we're suffering the most because the ego likes suffering. We think we want out, but we're actually generating the suffering. We're the dreamer of the dream. And it's very convincing. But the most important time to do this work is in that moment when we are suffering most. When you do it, most here have probably done it at least once. The contrast between what was happening for you a second ago and what's happening for you now is so significant. It's so severe a contrast. You get that, wait a second, it's never necessary for me to suffer. It's not even necessary for me to feel pain. And p- suffering is pain, but it's pain prolonged over a period of time. And you can only suffer, the Course says, when you're holding on to pain. Pain is a choice too. But if we choose not to suffer in any moment and invite the Holy Spirit in to show us the truth, which will awaken us, bring light and love into the situation so pain cannot stand in light and love, it will disappear, dissipate, we will experience joy and peace. In that moment, in that contrast, we know our power and we know that there is a choice. Now, we still may choose pain and suffering, but it's never quite the same. You know you're choosing it. It can't quite have the impact it had before. And you know there's an option to choose something else. This is always no matter what. And every great teacher that walked the planet was teaching this in some way, shape, or form. There's really nothing outside of us happening. We are dreaming the dream. You're a cause, not effect. And we cause through our thinking or the thoughts in our mind. Um, and all healing transformation happens in the mind first. And what changes in the mind then changes what reflects back to us in the outside world. So the reasoning by which the world is made on which it rests, by which it is maintained, is simply this. You are the cause of what I do. That's the reasoning of the world. It's not saying that that's true, but that is what's generating our experience. You are the cause of what I do. Your presence justifies my wrath, and you exist and think apart from me. Mm -hmm. While you attack, I must be innocent. And what I suffer from is your attack. No one who looks upon this quote unquote, reasoning exactly as it is could fail to see it does not follow and it makes no sense. Yet it seems sensible because it looks as if the world were hurting you. Maybe for a handful of people going and meditating in a cave is your way. But for most of us, this happens through relationship. The transformation occurs in relationship. The Course says you go to heaven two by two. What it means is your mind is transformed in your relationship with others and how you see them and perceive them and treat them, right? Mm -hmm. And so this is something we're doing together. You can both honor the illusion and come at it from the place of truth, right? So you are much more likely to affect a situation in a positive way or generate transformation if you don't buy into the illusion, right? Like the work I do with my clients, I get that they're in pain and suffering and I have compassion for that, but I also know they're caused. They have as much cause as me. They come from the same source that I come from. They have all the same power that I do and everyone else does. And I address them from that level. I don't treat them like a child that's indefensible or vulnerable or can be, I treat them as the power they are. And I remind them about that. I minister to them. You know, I have compassion for them as we're meant to have for each other, but I still hold the truth in my mind to the best of my ability. As soon as you buy in, you're now joining with the weakness of that person, right? You're joining with the pain and sufferings. You can save that child or take that child out of a dangerous situation or abusive situation at this level while holding the truth for them. And that's what matters. And of course, with a little child, you would address that in an appropriate way, right? Because from their perspective, it's true. They are a little child. They don't have access necessarily to the wisdom and knowledge you do. 
But even that's an illusion, ultimately. That's what we're being asked to remember. It's not really possible for you to be born over and over into these bodies. That can happen in a movie, in an illusion, but it can't happen in ultimate truth. So it's something we're making up and we're experiencing as if it's true, but it can't really happen. God created you a whole and complete or source created you, whatever you want to call it, universe, whole and complete as an extension of source, everything that source is. And so you are cause and you have the power to cause anything. That's the truth. And so does anyone. Mm -hmm.